great is our God. How great is His name. How great is our God. Forever the same. He rose by the waters of the mighty Red Sea. And He said, I'll never leave you. Put your trust in me. How great is our God, how great is His name, how great is our God, forever the same. He rose by the water of the mighty Red Sea, and He said, I'll never leave you, put your trust in me. And he said, I'll never leave you, put your trust in me. How great is our God, how great is his name, how great is our God, forever the same. He rose by the waters of the mighty Red Sea. And he said, I'll never leave you, put your trust in me. And he said, I'll never leave you, put your trust in me. And he said, I'll never leave you, put your trust in me. And he said, I'll never leave you. Put your trust in, put your trust in me. Greetings everybody, welcome once again. It's your favorite program, A Chapter A Day, aka A Card for short. On here we get to go live and we talk the Bible. We get to create an audio Bible as well so that you can listen and grow your faith. And then we get to do testimonies, which is the newest we celebrate birthdays, we sing for birthday people, we give them shout outs, we pray for them, and then we also get to study the word of God so that it becomes a practical reality for each and every one of us, right? It doesn't just get to be like some strange thing from no place, but the most part, we get to know who we are in Christ, the power we possess, the things we can and cannot do so that we can live a successful Christian life here on earth and end up spending eternity with God in heaven. Heaven in view. That's the whole idea. And while we're at it, we also get to sing, dance, celebrate, and jubilee. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back with all that we have in store for you today. Our Bible card is taken from the book of Amos chapter 8, and it has 14 verses. Amos chapter 8, and it has 14 verses. And that's the last but one chapter of this book of Amos, after which we are going to the next, very, very, very next book. I'm sure you all are excited. I hope you are excited as I am. I'm very, 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 very excited. So please, guys, just stay connected, stay right, and we're coming right back with all that we have for you. First things first. We want to hand over the session to God because God is the order of everything. God is the one who starts it. He's the one who begins it. He's the one who finishes it. So please, by all means, get ready for what we have. Fasten your seatbelts. Get your popcorn if you have to. Get any snack you want. And we're going to have a great time together here on a chapter a day. Happy midweek, people. We are having a cool time so far. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day that you've made a I'm glad in it. We thank you for your faithfulness, your loving kindness, your tender mercies. We thank you for your goodness as well, Lord. We thank you for all that you've done, you're doing, and you're still to do in our lives. Because in everything, you work for good to them that love and serve you and are called according to your purpose. You are the great, great God. You are an awesome God. You are marvelous. You are glorious. You are worthy to be praised. You are the lamb upon the throne. And you reign in righteousness forever. Lord, come and speak to us in a very special way today. We've come with great expectations. Our hearts are lifted to you. 
do it again spirit of god we are ready for you we have our hearts open to receive that which you have in store for us, O oh Lord. Father, we know whenever we come to dine and sup with you, it's always a balanced diet. We are totally and completely grateful. Lord, we pray that today is going to be you and you alone that will be seen, felt, heard, and experienced. No one else. That is going to be you, Lord. You and you alone. That will be that will be receptive. That will be recept that will be accepted here. That will be received. You'll be the focus and the center of everything we do here. No man or nobody. Take all the glory. Take preeminence, but now forevermore. Thank you, Lord, for another amazing session. Every single person who have been predestined or preordained to be here, Lord, they'll be here today without fail. None of them is gonna miss out. They are all going to get it right. Thank you, ever living Father because we know you always hear an answer. In Jesus' mighty and blessed name, we pray with thanksgiving. And all the saints shall say a ginormous amen, amen, and amen. So guys, let's get started. Now it's supposed to be testimony time. So what's my testimony for today? I actually got a really great news from someone. You know how when I told you guys here, right, that most of the times we kind of ask God for testimonies and we ask God for stuff or we pray for stuff and then we are hoping that, we are hoping that the things happen. And then we don't go back to verify because sometimes we don't pray for things to happen only for us. We pray for things to happen for our friends, for our brothers, for our sisters, you know, for people around us, the ones we love, the ones we care about, right? And so when you're done with those things, what's the next thing to do? You need to go find out, like you need to go to these people and verify if the thing has been done or not. You get? And so there was this thing that one of, um, someone really dear to me was supposed to get involved in. And I've been meaning to ask already, like since I was supposed to have asked since Sunday because it was Sunday that I was supposed to get the qualifying results and all that. So I've been meaning to ask on Sunday and I kept forgetting and forgetting and today, oh my, they just busted me out with the news and said, oh, they're qualified, they're getting it, they are, oh my God, it was so, so cool. That's my testimony number one. And then, testimony number two. So there's this application that my key brother gave me to, to, um, to register on and it's some kind of financial thing you know you send money you can send money all around the world and stuff and it's really easy and the rates are really good you know people who are abroad always need these things because sometimes believe you me situations and circumstances come around that you need to send some tiny wincy bitsy amount of money but you you really just can't send that amount because it's so expensive like the charges are weird and crazy they're terrible and so when you have an application that gives you an opportunity to be able to send without those crazy charges, you don't get bothered. If it just feels like you're doing a mobile money transfer for those who use mobile money, like those who have MTN and some kind of different countries have their mobile money transfers, but most of us, we know by Momo, right? Which is MTN. So yeah, she, he gave me this um, thing to do this transfer to do this um, um that helps to do transfers around the world and i was like oh, da, 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 you know and then i got to some point i really didn't know how to get the money from the wallet into my bank account and i was feeling really worried and i'd already um, try i was trying to do a transfer with someone on it and then i made them do a certain thing and they could not retrieve the money back so i was feeling really down and feeling bad about it and then i said okay i should just keep i should just go ahead and ask my key brother i asked him the part where we're supposed to do, I couldn't find it. And then later on, I was just like, Holy Spirit, help me. You really have to help me. And then while I was just sitting down there quietly, I decided to just go through the thing again. By the time I was checking it out, I saw the place where it is easy. It makes it very easy and very possible for me to be able to get the money to my account. I was totally and completely happy. See, God is concerned about every little thing that concerns you. If you have issues, if you have some things that are challenging, if you have some things that are difficult, and you go to God and say, Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Spirit, teach me. Holy Spirit, show me. The Bible says that he's your comforter, he's your teacher, he's your friend. I mean, you are very present help in time of need. So why don't we make use of that? It's an opportunity that is made available for us who know the Holy Spirit, right? So when you're in their need, you say, one of my sisters, 
she says she will always say holy spirit help your girl help your girl oh help your girl like it works it really works it does work so yes sometimes that's how it gets to go okay people that's it for my and i was just talking about her and she got in here there's this thing that they say in in my place right that way you're talking about someone and the person shows up it means that the person has long life <laughs> Marry favor, you got a whole lot of long life, you know. But our long life is dependent on God, not on these things that happen. But anyway, it's like it kind of like happens like that. So you have a so much long life. Welcome to the live stream. Welcome, Julian Fabio. Welcome, good. Welcome, Hazel. Welcome, uh, SK Samrat. Welcome, Aris Aresli Mendez. Welcome, Boss Eve. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And to our Thai friend, I can't read Thai, so I can't say hello to you because I can't read your name out. Forgive me for that. I'm really sorry about that. Hi, Boss Jane. Hi, Boss Zafira. Hi, Boss Delire. Greetings to you all. Welcome. So we are getting on. We're continuing. After testimony time is always the time for birthday party. We're celebrating birthday people. So yes, like I said, once you pray for something, try to check in over and over and over to know whether the results have come out or not. Whether you can still continue praying or you should just be doing Thanksgiving or what should be the state so that because we pray until something happens. We pray until we see the manifestation. We don't pray and stop when we've not gotten our results yet. No, we don't do that. We ain't doing that. We ain't doing that. You know? So that's exactly how it works on here. So let's get on. It's birthday party time. Yeah, yeah. It's birthday party time. Oh, yes. Welcome aboard, everybody. The first person is Uncle Enoch. Uncle Enoch is my... Should I say Ghanaian dad? I love Ghanaian dads, but he's one of my dads. Like the real church dad. So... They, we used to live around each other. Our houses were really close. And when they realized that I really liked some nice things and stuff, and of course I was in Ghana. It wasn't my country. So I was an expert or foreigner. And yes, they made me enjoy Ghana to the last bit of it until I was leaving. And of course, he wasn't even happy that I was leaving. They were all like, why are you going? You should stay here. You should like, well, God had other plans for me. You know, every point in time, when I'm done with what I'm doing in a, in a particular country, God moves me from there as fast as possible and takes me to the next place where he will have me have an assignment on it. And so, yes, Uncle Enoch, when it comes to food, they were always spot on. Like, almost every Sunday, they used to call me because I used to like this food that they, they prepared in Ghana called um, Fufu and Palm Nut Soup. It's kind of like something that we have in my country, but the way it's prepared is different, but it's nice too. So that was one of my best. And then Wache was the next. Some kind of rice mixed with beans and cooked at the same time. It was really nice. And they have these um, toppings that they put on it, shito or something like that. It's really cool. So yes, if you're in Ghana sometime, check out Fufu and Pam Not Soup and check out Wache and thank me later. <laughs> Anyways, Evangelist Mary Favor gave her testimony. So let's read it out. And she says, my testimony today is that the Lord gave me a great return to digestion experience after my three days retreat last week. There was a time the experience almost landed me in the hospital, just like your testimony of yesterday. Right? I know. Uh, that's so cool. Nothing is too small to celebrate. Truly, nothing is too small to celebrate. Sometimes we've been so used to getting things that when we get some things we just feel like well it's my right it's normal i'm supposed to have this thing it's not it's not it's not your right because some people didn't get it some people are not getting it and it's not like you're just super special to have gotten it yeah i remember i remembered i so i understand this testimony perfectly well i remember there was one time i mean it literally was going to land her in the hospital her experience after this whole i mean it was crazy i was scared to <laughs> i was totally and completely scared i remember that one i'll never forget it so going through this experience and not having it and you know 
it's beautiful it's beautiful there's some of those little things that we take for granted up until we see the effect it has like it has some really graving grievous effects you know upon our lives but because we get it all the time and we get it normal we feel like it's okay hmm. if you've not had digestion problems before you will not know what someone is talking about when they say they have digestion issues you you just might not get it i remember when people used to say toothache is a crazy thing to get i used to feel like i never had it so it wasn't really a thing i felt like maybe these people are just overly dramatic or something up until i had it then i knew that they don't 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 make light of somebody's experience don't don't make light of somebody's experience that you didn't experience it that way or that you're not experiencing it that way doesn't mean that what they're experiencing is true don't try to invalidate people's experiences no maybe based on yours or based on what you've heard or based on what you think you know believe me that some experiences that are crazy when I had toothache, <laughs> da, da, da. He, it was me who was carrying myself around into the hospital. Nobody told me. I thought I was powerful. I thought I was strong. I thought I could handle it. And I couldn't. I could. Toothache is not your mate. It's, it's not your mate. Don't play. <laughs> Say, no, just wait. The thing is not really painting. By the time my jaw was swollen and I was, it was like I couldn't. <laughs> I went to the hospital without asking for permission now like i i could not wait it was crazy it was painful i mean like pain painful it is well i'll never wish that even for my enemy trust me that thing is wild i mean like it's wild so yes no testimony is small none at all is small so testify so once again happy birthday to you uncle enna thank you for being a great dad spiritually physically and otherwise and i'm glad that you um you were part of my life when i was in ghana i do not take it for granted if someday i come back there i'll definitely want to visit you all with all my boys uh, i would really want to visit you all the next person is mr fear mac ikoko mr fear mac ikoko i got to know through one of my dads that god gave me as well and um i lived in his sister's house for a while and he used to come there he's a fun to be with person there's never a dull moment with him he's always very serious and focused but when he's around people that he's comfortable with oh my god he can make you literally laugh your lungs out like he's so funny and so nice but he's also so very very smart as well that's one thing i know about him basically their entire family is cool like that i mean they just took me in like they had known me for like forever like really really like i was part of their family for really, really like blood family that's how this family took me mr fear makikoko was the last person to get to meet me yeah i think among yeah that's true amongst all of them he was the last person to get to meet me and of course he also just accepted me like every other person accepted me and i was like oh god you have a way of giving me this really cool family members that i even could maybe it's gonna make me cry i'm not gonna cry it's so beautiful happy birthday to you uh <laughs> uncle pa mark ikoko god bless you the next person is mom teresa agua mom teresa agua how did i connect with her is this kind of thing that is saying that when you're connected to five wise people you'll be the seed wife person kind of thing so i was connected to some of these amazing women and the women were connected to her and so i connected with her as well she always gives like candid advice to women and people in general on her page and sometimes i got to stumble on her live streams and they're really good really great and the the funny thing is that most people are hardly on these live streams that are giving you hardcore truths on diluted word of god on diluted life steps no faking being real and being as honest and as clear and as proper as you can be a lot of them don't give that um i forgot the name i think it's talk sister talk or something i forgot the name of that her talk show it was very good very good i watched about two the time difference was really giving me a hard time to keep up you know that's how it is thank you so much ma'am teresa Bo, for being an amazing woman for carrying people along for helping as many people as you do 
for supporting people as much as you do. May the good Lord bless you. The next person is Mam Chinelo Olisa Oranu. Mam Chinelo Olisa was actually like a big, not like super super big, like my big. There are some classes ahead of me when we're in secondary school. And they have this way where they, they kind of deal with um, junior formers, the ones in the lower classes. But she was never that kind of person. She was a sweet one. She was the one always looking out for the young ones. Like the ones whom nobody can look out for. Like, you know, defender of the weak kind of, you know. She was that kind of person. She really hated it. Sometimes she would, she would voice it out, even if you're there or not. She's like, I don't like the way you guys are treating this junior formers. months. I really don't like it. She was a motherly kind of person. And so almost everybody in secondary school loved her. I mean, like almost every single person in secondary school loved her. I loved her as well. Very calm, soft-spoken, pretty and amazing lady. Happy birthday to you, Mam Chinelo Lisa. The last but not the least, Bad and I are. These are really good friends that I got to meet on YouTube. They helped me grow my YouTube channel to monetization. They were always sharing my videos, watching my videos and stuff like that. And of course, they were always coming to my live stream to support me and all. Believe me, sometimes it's really hard it's just that I've grown a thick skin or I've learned or God has groomed me and he continuously grooms me. It's not funny to be on a live stream and you're alone. Like sometimes it's tiring. And especially if it's not just like a short one that you're going to be there. It's just in and out kind of thing. You're there and you're going on and on and on and nobody's there. You know, sometimes when you get people saying one or two things, yes, I understand. Yes, I can relate. It makes like it gives you some kind of thing to go on it kind of like a vibe or a ginger to go on like that before i used to be so worried about it and i was very very much super grateful to them because they were always coming there keeping me company sometimes hours on ending i used to be there <laughs> guys if you know places and things we've done to get monetized on all these social media platforms and stuff and then the funny thing is that after getting monetized the lord removed me from there and brought me on Facebook. That's why we're doing a chapter a day every single day. <laughs> he told me Facebook. It had to be the place that is most accessible because the thing was about accessing the information. It was not just about putting it on there because if it were to me, I would have preferred to do it on YouTube, right? I'm monetized on YouTube. Don't you think that would be a best option? But no, he said I'm doing it on Facebook because everybody, literally almost everybody has easy access to Facebook. That's how I'm here. And the monetized channel is there doing whatever you can do. And I'm here doing my own that I can do. That's how we roll on this thing, oh my dearest. But it's all good. I, I would never trade a chapter a day for nothing. If we go back again and I'm supposed to accept again, I'll accept again to do a chapter a day and drop every other thing else. I would. Because I've gotten to a place of understanding. I've gotten to a place of maturity. God has taken me through the process and I kind of understand why he does things the way he does them. And I'm grateful that he chose me and honored me to do this. He could as much have just chosen anybody, but he chose me. Welcome, Mr. Chavez. Greetings to you and greetings to the family. Happy, happy, happy Wednesday. Happy midway. So let's take that again. Happy birthday to you. And they're, they're, they're both in Singapore. And when we got to know each other, I was like, oh, I've been to Singapore. And they were like, oh, I wish you were here when we knew each other so would have given you a treat or something and i would have really loved that so i know it's on my bucket list if i have to go to singapore once again i'll definitely look for them so that we can catch up and have fun because they're really nice people they're really nice people so let's go happy birthday to uncle enoch happy birthday to uncle fie mac ikoko happy birthday to mom theresa agbo happy birthday to mom chinelo lisa Rano. happy birthday to bad and i i that's it for the birthday book that's it for the birthday people and like i always say you can also get yourself in this precious birthday book by giving me your birthday and then i'll put it right on here and when it's your due day i'm gonna celebrate you welcome boss delia welcome boss karen welcome 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 we are just getting on and if you're just signing in right now this is your favorite audio Bible creation and audio Bible study program called A Chapter A Day, aka a card for short. And on here we get to know who we are in Christ, the power we possess, the things we can and cannot do, so that we can live a successful Christian life and get to end up spending eternity with God in heaven. 
heavenly view. That's the whole idea. And while we're at it, we also celebrate birthdays. We testify. We study the Bible. We create an audio Bible as well so that you can grow your faith. Right now, we are about to pray for the birthday people. We're praying for every single person who is born today. Not just the people whom I give a shout out to right now, but to every single person who is born today. So guys, can we get this prayer on? And after that, we're going to do the audio Bible creation. And after the audio Bible creation, we are going to do Bible study. And please don't make this a monologue let it be a dialogue be in the comment section and put it up on fire light it up or you request to come live i love that one too so that we can get to speak the word of god and have a conversation together okay people so let's go let's go let's go let's go let's go and we'll be coming right back for the audio bible creation and the bible study Welcome Lucille, welcome Julian, Fabio, oh you're going in and out, my internet does that to me sometimes too, it gets me going in and out, and I'm thinking I've finished my task when I've not, okay, so let's get to prayer, Father, right, we thank you for all these amazing people who were born today, oh Lord, we thank you for adding a new year to their lives, we thank you for opening beautiful pages and writing awesome stories on there that will give them reasons to celebrate and dance and rejoice, Lord, we thank you for causing them to increase in wisdom and stature, gaining favor before God and before men. Lord, we thank you, O God, for making their gifts to make a way for them, causing them to stand before kings, not before mean men. And if possible, making them kings and queens, that's also possible because you're the impossibility specialist. Lord, we pray, O God, that you divinely guide them, divinely connect them to people and things that will cause them to be their best, and divinely disconnect them from people and things that will cause them to stagnate or retrogress. Lord, we pray, oh God, that you're going to lift them to the top. And not only that, but you cause them to stay there permanently. It's one thing to get to the top, and it's another thing entirely to get there and stay there permanently. So, Lord, we say thank you. We are forever grateful. We do not take for granted all that you do for us, in us, with us, and around us. Lord, we are grateful for all that you're doing in the lives of these people. We thank you for causing them to be blessings in their generation and beyond. And as these blessings and gifts and all this goodness fall upon them, O oh Lord, people will literally come in contact with them will rub off of the blessings and will be able to give God praise, honor, and adoration because he deserves it. Lord, we pray, O oh God, that you are going to open their eyes to see those they are supposed to be destined up to, so they'll strategically position themselves to help these people when the time is right. And we also pray, Lord, that you are going to help them to be able to do the things that you want them to do. To be able to live the way that you want them to live. Lord, we bless your holy name, O oh God. Father, we pray, O oh God, that you cause them to be trailblazers, faces, and world changers in the mighty name of Jesus. Give them all that it takes to go and conquer their world. Lord, help them to stand out and not fit in. That at every point in time, whatever they do, O oh God, is going to be for your glory, O oh God. That they would serve you for the rest of their days diligently and in all beauty, all gleeds and glamour, all to the glory of your name. Thank you, everlasting Father. Thank you, King of glory. Thank you, I am that I am. Thank you, creator of all the universe. There's nothing you cannot do. You are the protocol breaker. Open doors to them that no man can shut and shut every door that is not of you. Lord, that they will keep shining right and right out to the perfect day. Let your word be a lamb unto their feet and a light to their part. Lord, perfect all that concerns them. Give them a sound 126 state, a state of continuous laughter, singing, rejoicing, jubilation, and celebration. And if you're to come, they'll be here at the same time next year, testifying of all the awesome sauce things that you've done in their lives. Yes, Lord. We say thank you. We really do appreciate you from the bottom of our hearts. This, Lord, is going to be their best birthday yet. Let money meet money in their pockets. Blessings meet blessings in their lives. Favor meets favor in their lives. Even as you clothe them with a garment of faith, praise, honor, and favor in the mighty name of Jesus. That even their enemies who want to do them good. Lord, we say thank you. We really, really do appreciate you from the bottom of our hearts. Lord, let whatever they lay their hands on prosper. Whatever they trade their feet upon, give it to them as a possession. 
Lord, whatever they say, be pleased unto your hearing. Whatever they do, be pleased unto your sight. And whatever they touch, be blessed and sanctified. Even before they get to touch it. You say we'll call on you and you answer it. I show us great and mighty things which you never knew. Let that become their practical reality in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for hearing and answering us. For in Jesus' mighty and blessed name, we pray with thanksgiving. And all the saints shall say a ginormous amen, amen, and amen. Amen, people. But I love to sing the amen, so let's go. Amen. 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 Let it be so. Amen. 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 In their lives. Amen. As we have prayed. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. Let it be in their lives. Still the prayers. Amen. 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 With the blood of Jesus. Amen. Let it be so. Amen. Come on. Amen. Yeah. Amen. In their lives. As we pray. God bless you all tremendously. May for your bands with all good things. Enlarge your coast. And do for you that which no man can do. I always get to say I love you so freaking much. But God loves you way, way more. Have a blast. Happy birthday. Je vous aime, mais Dieu vous aime plus, plus fort que moi. Joyeux anniversaire vous tous. Bisous, bisous. Mwah. Kisses to you all. Happy birthday, people. Let's get that Bible party started. Are you with me? Ready or not, here I come. Oh, guys, let's get it. You move mountains. You cause walls to fall with your power. You perform miracles. There is nothing, nothing, nothing that's impossible here. Now we're standing here only because God made a way. I am sitting here. Only because God made a way. God always makes a way. We're ready. We're set. Go. Amos chapter 8. Thus had the Lord God shoot unto me. And behold a basket of summer fruit. And he said, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then said the Lord unto me, The end is come upon my people of Israel. I will not again pass by them any more. And the songs of the temple shall be holings in that day, saith the Lord God. There shall be many dead bodies in every place. They shall cast them forth with silence. Hear this, O ye that swallow up the needy, even to make the poor of the land to fall saying when will the new moon be gone that we may sell corn and the sabbath that we may set forth wheat making the effort small and the shekel great and falsifying the balances by deceit that we may buy the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of shoes yea and sell the refuse of the wheat the Lord had sworn by the excellency of Jacob, surely I'll never forget any of their works. Shall not the land ter shall not the land tremble for this, and every one mourn that dwelleth therein? And it shall rise up wholly as a flood, and it shall be cast out and drowned, as by the flood of Egypt. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord God that I'll cause the sun to go down at noon, and I'll darken the earth in the clear day, and I'll turn your fists into mourning, and all your songs into lamentation, and I'll bring up sackcloth upon all loins, and baldness upon every head, and I'll make it as the morning of an only sun, and the end thereof as a bitter day, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I'll send a famine in the land, 
and not of famine of bread, nor thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north, even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. In that day shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst. They that swear by the scene of Samaria, and say, Thy God, O Dan, leave it, and the manner of Bathsheba, leave it. Even they shall fall and never rise up again. This is the word of the Lord, and all the saints shall say, Ejinomus, thanks be to God. So what did you learn? What did you learn? What did you learn? Let's get this Bible party on with. Thor how the Lord God shewed unto me, and behold, a basket of summer fruits. And he said, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, A basket of summer fruits. Then said the Lord unto me, The end is come upon my people Israel. I will not pass again. I will not again pass by them anymore. And the sons of the temple shall be hauling's. In that day, saith the Lord God, there shall be many dead bodies in every place. They shall cast them forth in silence. We know the bad story. God has been warning these people and telling them what was to come and giving them the way out, telling them to return, to repent and come back to him. And these people were just adamant. They were not ready to turn. They were not ready to change. They were not ready to come back to him. And so the time was here. The people had to receive their due sanctions. Hear this, O ye that swallow up the needy, even to make the poor of the land fail. Say, when will the new moon be gone, that we may sell corn, and the Sabbath, that we may set forth wheat, making the effort small, and the shekel great, and falsifying the balances by deceit. <laughs> These people are so invested in material things, in wealth, in physical things, so much so that they get mad that there is a Sabbath. They get mad that there is a day to rest. And they are all up about when would this rest day finish so I should go start making money. Child of God, when money becomes an idol to you, or when material things becomes an idol to you, that's what happens. You become a slave to it instead of being a master to it. The Bible did not say that we shouldn't have money. It's the love of it that is the problem. And there are a lot of people who have become slaves to money because of the love of it. It's the Bible that says money answers it all things. So, yes, we do need money. Yes, I would have lots and lots of it because I need to do great kingdom work. Sure. But now when we start letting that money rule us, instead of us ruling money, it becomes a problem. These people were so ready to want to do business, to want to make money, that they were mad about the fact that they were using the poor, they were taking advantage of the poor, they were dealing with people, falsifying weights and balances, you want to make profit, make profit all right, but make it the right way. I remember when I was selling peanut butter. Um, I don't have it here. I don't have a sample. I would have shown you guys a sample. I remember when I was making peanut butter. It's actually groundnuts coated with flour, egg, milk, sugar, and stuff like that. I have that on my YouTube channel. I have that even on Facebook as well. You know, it's actually sad how people do these things, you know. Like, they go on and on like... I remember when I used to make peanut butter, right? So there were, there were, there were, I would say there were kind of like standard prices. You know, we used to sell them in bottles and maybe 0.5 liters in 1.5 liters and stuff like that. And then we used to sell it as well in sachets, some little sachets like that. And so everybody's 1.5 liter was actually, um, everybody's 1.5 liter was actually. 1,500 let's just put it at dollars because dollars is the common currency right was $1,500 but mine was $2,000 
And why? Because I wasn't compromising quality. When I started doing that business, the Holy Spirit told me that there's one thing I'm not going to compromise on, and it's going to be quality. I ain't going to compromise on quality. He doesn't care how expensive that thing gets. I'm not going to compromise on quality. He doesn't have a problem with me switching the quantities and swapping it here and there, but the quality, I'm never going to compromise on it. And till date, whenever I do peanut butter, everybody, everybody says it tastes different, and it's it's nice it's cool it's it's enjoyable because i took to what the lord told me never compromise quality a lot of people used to compromise quality in different ways in diverse ways they make it so big and then it's no longer crunch crunchy when you fry it they make it so like they use some really big granite that does not have some really good taste and stuff like that and so when you're chewing up on it it's not really nice it's not really it's not really the thing like you know it's not really it but I used to use some really expensive groundnuts. That groundnut, when you eat that groundnut just by itself, it's really nice. And you can eat it just by itself. Then imagine when it's coated inside milk and sugar and flour like that. It was just so cool. So that was me. I used to tell the people and they will be like, oh, it's so small. Can't you just add it? I told them I'm not compromising quality, so I cannot. It's business, right? I'm supposed to make profits. If I'm supposed to make profits, then I have to come up with some strategy. And my strategy, which was okay, it wasn't wrong, was to reduce quantity. Or would you rather I reduce quality and then give you on qualitative products in big quantities? No. Every average human being loves quality. You love quality. I love quality. I don't know about you though. Let me let me not talk on, on your behalf. But as for me, if you are there, let me know. If you're in the comment section, don't you love quality? Tell me in the comment section. I love quality. Every average human being loves quality. So yes, they kept complaining, but they were buying all the time because they knew that I was truly not compromising on quality. And at some point, I used to tell them that if you want me to go and buy you the qualitative one for the amount of money that you have, I can do it for you. Because some of these poor business people, they could not leave their shops. You know, it was like, you know, it's always kind of rush, rush, rush for them. So I, I, I would promise them, I'll tell them, I know where to sell the less qualitative one and for that price that you want it. So I could actually literally leave my stuff here or I go around with my stuff and then I buy that one for you and bring it for you. And they knew I was serious. I wasn't joking. Yeah, I was serious. There's some people who used to say, oh, all these things are the same. I'll tell them, take a sachet, taste tasted. If you taste it and it's good, you pay for it and then you buy some more. If you taste it and it's not good, that's fine. You can throw it away. I used to do that. Why? Because I was confident on what I was producing. I was confident. I wasn't falsifying things. And you know, sometimes people say, oh, but I also bought a product and I want to sell the product. You don't have any business telling the person how much you bought it. Because where the problem starts coming when it comes to Christians is that you say, ah, I didn't even buy for that amount of and you know truly well that you bought it for an amount that is it's way less than that. You're saying like, I didn't buy it for that amount, meaning that the person should increase the price. Meanwhile, you bought it for less than that amount. You're lying. You are lying. It's not a business strategy. If it is, it's not a godly one. And I'm not sorry that I'm telling you. You are a cheat. You're cheating people. Yours is not just so broad and so glaring like scammers would do. It's not just so broad and so glaring like thieves, like armed robbers who come to someone's house. But you're a thief and you're a cheat. You can buy your product for $5 and decide to sell it for $20. You have no business telling the buyer how much you bought the thing. Well, mine is sold for $20. If you can't afford it, that's okay. No, there are people who sell it for $10 and $15. By all means, just go to those people and buy. It's okay. But you see me? I bought mine and I'm choosing to sell it for $20. $20 is my last price. That's simple. I'm not going to give you for less than $20. That is my takeaway price. You don't need to say, I didn't buy it for $10. And you know very well that you bought it for $5. Because at every point in time, when you're saying I didn't buy it for $10, it's because you're trying to make the person know that you didn't buy it for less. That money that they're giving you is less.
That's what you mean. Because someone will say, but yes, now nah, I didn't buy it for $10. Yes, but you bought it for $5, which means you could sell it for $10. Because you've already made a $5 profit. So you lied. But at every point in time when a business person is telling you, I didn't buy it for that amount, they're trying to tell you that what you're paying is less than how they bought it for, which is not true in most cases. That's lie telling and that's cheating. So they're falsifying balances. I remember a friend of mine just went on um, a couple of days ago. I stumbled upon her video and she was so mad about some of these people who take weight and in my country, when they want to sell peanuts, when they want to sell salt, when they want to sell some other things, they put it in some containers, right? They put it in and put it in and then pour it into whatever they're pouring it for you. And so some of these people will take this thing. Let's just say, for example, like a cup like this. It's, it's, it's um, basically, it's not plastic. It's not plastic. It's not glass. You know, they hardly use glass because they know that you cannot do anything for glass. Even though some people use glasses, they take those glasses, they break them, break them, and then they tape them back together. And in the process of taping that glass together, it actually reduces the quantity. I mean, these people have all kinds of crazy things they do just to make money. But that's wrong. It's cheating. And God doesn't condone with that. And funny thing is, some people who say they're Christians, they're doing that too. How? How do you now make the difference between you and the people of the world? How, would you, how, how do we now know that you're different? They'll take those things and they'll push the cup in. It has some kind of material. It's somehow like metal, but not really, really metal. They'll push that thing inside. This place is supposed to be flat. It won't be flat. It'll be inside like a cone. It'll be like some kind of cone kind of thing. Then they'll squeeze the thing, squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it. And then you'll have some of these bumps here and there. So when they put the things in, it doesn't feel like it has to fill up on a normal day if you just take the ne normal regular cup or glass like that and use it they do all these things fake balances you're falsifying balances it's not correct these people had done it too in their days they had done it in their days and it's wrong the the lord doesn't condone with it he doesn't like it it's not business do business the right way do business the right way. There are people who are doing it right and they're getting profit. Do it the right way. Just don't do it in a way that is going to hurt God. Just don't do it in a way that is not going to represent God. Don't. Does God want us to make profit? Yes, by all means. He wants us to. But should we make profits by lying? No. You cannot use the devil's weapon to get God's results. Nah nada you have to use god's weapons to get his results do you understand what i just said you cannot steal and then say you are blessed mm -mm. stealing is not godly hey, i was blessed with hundred thousand you went and stole from somebody's house you're an arm robber you are not blessed you stole Okay. That we may buy the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of shoes, yea, and sell the refuse of the wheat. The Lord had sworn by the excellency of Jacob, surely I'll never forget any of their words. Shall not the land tremble for this, and every one mourn that dwelleth therein? And it shall rise up wholly as a flood, and it shall be cast out and drowned as by the flood of Egypt. And it shall come to pass in that day, say the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day. Oh, there was something going on on all over social media yesterday, or it was two days ago, about the eclipse day, the lunar whatever, right? It didn't happen here. I didn't notice it, you know. But I, I heard it happened in most parts of the Americas, um, Northern South Americans, I guess it happened there. And I heard that some parts of East, uh, is it the Middle East, I think? I don't know. I don't know. But it never happened here. And they said that that happens once in how many years? I, I don't know. Happy Luna Day was Happy Eclipse Day or something. It happened in a lot of places, but it didn't happen here. And so God can do that. 
There are several times where God has changed nature. He has held nature. He has forced nature. He has, he has defied all the things that we believe and we stand for. Gravity and all the like. He went into heaven. He's not back yet. He's going to come someday. You know, gravity is supposed to be pulling him down. He could not have remained in the heavens. He had to come back down, but he didn't. He's still in the heavens. Seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, making intercessions for us. He also walked on water. That's not supposed to be a normal thing. Yeah. Our weight is going to pull us down inside. But no, he walked on water. Jesus did a whole lot of things. That was just to show us that he created those things. And he can control them. He can make them go however he wants them to go. He might make them favor whoever he wants them to favor. And that's why he could hold the sun so that his son, was it Gideon or Joshua, should be able to finish fighting battle. That was supposed to affect the entire world because the way the sun rotates, right? It rotates around the earth, right? So stopping the sun at that point in time means that some people who would normally have been getting the sun will still be having darkness as at that point in time. And some people who are supposed to have been having darkness will still have daylight at that time. And we are confused and surprised as to why some countries have like longer days, shorter nights, shorter days, longer nights for as long as I can remember. There's this part of Finland where it's like, is it three months or six months? I'm not sure exactly, but I think it's a long time, a long period of time. It's all darkness, two, four, seven. They've adapted though. And there's this time, it's all light, two, four, seven. They've adapted. They found ways on how to deal with that. And they're living their life normally like we are here, who have night and day. They have a season, maybe three months or six months. I can't remember exactly. I'll find out again. Of daylight and the same for night yeah that's how it works so the Lord is faithful and it keeps doing all these amazing things with us for us and around us just for his glory and so he had to hold the sun and cause darkness to come earlier longer days shorter nights we get to have that sometimes and sometimes we have shorter days longer nights based on seasons but god can do that instantly so when god can do all these kinds of things shouldn't you trust him more with your life and with the things that happen to you that he can do something big and great for you Shouldn't you trust them more? You should. It says, and I'll turn your fists into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. And I'll bring up sackcloth upon all loins and baldness upon every head. And I'll make it as the morning of an only son and the end thereof as a bitter day. Nobody likes mourning. Nobody likes problems. Nobody likes sad situations. And so when you get those days, it's bitter. It's sad. But they are the ones who brought it upon themselves. They are the ones who decided not to escape this thing that was coming because it gave them a way out. Every single time God gave a warning and told them what was coming, he also gave them a way out. So if you want to escape all these kinds of things, if you want to escape the morning, if you want to escape the bitter day, then you know what to do. Return to God. Repent and return repent and return but they were not doing it they were not doing it behold the days come say the lord god that i will send a farming in the land and not a farming of bread nor thirst for water but of hearing the words of the lord hmm. i'm praying that every day for me should be like that day where I hunger and I test gravely for the Lord. I want to know him more. He says, um, I surrender. I surrender. I want to know you more. I want to know you more. I surrender.
should be your heart's cry to know God more. You cannot leave this generation, this times and seasons without God. I tell you the truth. Even those of us who have the word of God, even those of God of us who have God, we're studying the word, we are having communion with God. It's not as easy as it looks. It's not as easy as we make it seem. It's the spirit of God that is helping us. And we have an understanding of what's going on and where we're headed. Hi, Grand Canuck. Hi, Mommy Akaria. Happy midweek to you, boss. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome, Miss Chandra. Welcome, welcome, welcome. God bless you. We know. We know that God is with us all the way. He will never leave us, nor forsake us. He will be with us. But does it mean that we don't have challenges? We do. But we have a different way of looking at it because we're coming from a vintage point. We're already coming from a winning point, right? That's how we're looking at it. And so if we don't hunger and test for the word of God, we're going to be in so much trouble. And the good news is, blessed are they who do hunger and test for righteousness, for they shall be filled and obtain mercy. So that hunger for God is not just going to go like that. As you hunger and test for him, you'll be filled. And when you're filled, the things that are happening around the world, the things that are happening to you in the now do not move you because you know what the word of God has said. You know the truth concerning the word of God. That's how it works. And he says, um, And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. Oh my. Scarcity of the word of the Lord. Now that it's easy for you to get the word of God, why don't you just get it? Why don't you just study it? There might come a time where you look for it, you will not be able to find it. Just like the five unwise virgins. All of them were virgins, all right? Yes, we all are Christians. But if you want to go the extra mile, you need extra oil. If you want to be a part of the, of the, of the marriage supper of the lamb, you need extra oil. Because if the groom is coming, when your lamb has been trimmed, when your lights are out, you can enter. You need your lights on. You need your lambs on. And to keep your lambs on that long, you need extra oil. Extra oil is coming from the word of God. And you're refusing to study the word of God. We can't help you. Your mother can help you. Your father can help you. Your mentors, your leaders, your pastors. Nobody can help you. When it comes to salvation, you have to make that choice by yourself. When it comes to standing in the faith, you have to still make that choice by yourself. No one can do it for you. Do you get it? I hope you do. They will search for the word of God. They won't find it. I watched a documentary or a, a, a kind of video that was showing how they were dealing with this Chinese people and Russia's people with during the time of I think the Soviet Union or something where they never wanted them to study the Word of God they never wanted to hear about God and all of that man I saw how they were putting people in gas chambers and fuming them to death I saw how they were putting some people in some really cold cells no bed nothing no food like, Those people don't have the opportunities that we have today. We have Bibles all over the place. Even in the click of our phones, we have Bibles. And we're still grumbling and making noise and murmuring and all these things. Ah, people of God, we need to get up. We need to snap out of it. We need to. We need to snap out of it, people. Man, like what is going on? We have to get this, so we have to get it right. We should hunger and test for the word of God now and, 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 and get it while we can because there's coming a time when we would search for it, we would hunger so much for it and thirst so much for it, but we won't be able to find it. Hunger and test now and get filled. 
Study the word of God. Hi Chelsea. Hi question mark question mark question mark. In that day shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst. They that swear by the sin of Samaria and say, Thy God, O Dan, leave it. And the manner of Beersheba, leave it. Even they shall fall and never rise up again. Yeah. That time you try to want to pretend like, Oh, the Lord, leave it. Oh, the God of this, leave it. It's not going to help you. That's not a confession that will help you because you should have already made up your mind and you accepted the finished work of Christ on the cross and then made it your Lord and your Savior and then you start confessing the word of God and then it begins to work for you. We wonder why some people confess the word of God over and over and over and it doesn't work for them because it's fake. It's fake. The Bible says some of you would say, Lord, Lord, I did this in your name and did that. He said, depart from me. I know you not. Because he knows it's fake. He knows. He knows his faith. So we need to get it right, people. We just have to get it right. And this is why we're wrapping up with the chapter today for today. And tomorrow is another day, people. I just can't wait. Tomorrow is another beautiful day. We're going to be doing Amos chapter 9. And that will be the last chapter for this book. And then we'll be getting to the next book. Who can guess what the next book is? Do you know? Well, I'm hoping tomorrow you can guess what the next book is. So you can go ahead and find out today what the next book is going to be. Okay? And so, yes, I always get to say I love you so very much. But God loves you way, way more. Get to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get all the updates each time we upload a new video or we get to go live. It has been your favorite girl. Princess Clayton, Queen of Hearts, and Laughter. <laughs> and yes, it's been a chapter a day, aka a card for sure. And on here we get to know who we are in Christ, the point because there's the things we can and cannot do. We should or should not do so that we can live a successful Christian life here on earth and end up spending eternity with God in heaven. Heaven in view. That's the whole idea. And yes, while we're at it, we create a King James Version of your Bible for your faith growth. We get to study the word of God together so that it can become a practical reality for you. We get to celebrate birthdays and give shout outs and pray for birthday people and the newest of them all. We get to give testimonies. Those little things that God do for you. Get to thank him so that you can do the big ones. If you don't appreciate people for the little things they do for you, don't do bigger things. Believe me, Thanksgiving is like a trigger for bigger blessings. I've learned and it works. It does work. Okay, people? So, yes, this is where we're wrapping up today. And we're praying that the good Lord is going to help us to hunger and test for the word and study his word. So that we don't get to a point where we are seeking and hungry and thirsty and we can be filled. Let's pray. Father, we come before your throne of grace today, O Lord. And bring before you all your children all over the world. We pray that you're going to create a hunger and a thirst in our hearts for you and your word. Because your word says, blessed are they who do hunger and test for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Lord, fill us up to end of the floor. We want to run over. Lord, cause us to hunger and test for you so desperately that we're going to receive you in grand style. Thank you, Lord, because we know you're a faithful God. You say we should ask. If we lack, we should ask. You say we've not received because we've not asked. So, Lord, this day we're asking that you help us. Help us to continuously abide in you while you abide in us to hunger and test for you continuously so that we can continuously be filled thank you lord god for in jesus name we pray amen tomorrow is another day i'm hoping to get each and every one of you right here we're doing amos chapter 9 read ahead of time and let's have a small time together thank you we have our audio bible on tiktok facebook instagram linkedin and all the social media platforms you can find us on for those of you on Facebook, you have our WhatsApp, Telegram, TikTok, and all those other platforms. Facebook, Messenger, and all, you have our details on there. It's in the comment section. You can click on it. The audio Bible is also there. You can easily access it from there. And you listen to a chapter every single day. A chapter a day keeps the devil away. 
Yes. Because when you study the word of God, you know exactly what the Lord is saying concerning you. And you're not moved. You're not frightened. Okay? So, guys. We are wrapping up already. Thank you all for being here. I really, really do appreciate you. You're welcome, Hazel. I'm glad you always come here and have a great time. So I believe you have a great time. Fire, thank you for this day that you married. Joyce, I'm glad you thank you for another awesome, amazing, beautiful session that you gave us today. Lord, we do not take it for granted. We're forever grateful. Lord, continuously guide, bless, lead us, show us the way so that we can do the things that you want us to do and do it right. So that we can do your will and do it perfectly. Father, we are totally and completely grateful. We do not take for granted all that you do with us, in us, around us, and for us. Lord, let this word be engrafted on the first tables of our hearts. So that we're going to go thereby and we'll believe in epistles right of man. Some people will never read the Bible hard copy. Neither will they listen to the audio Bible we're creating. That's fine too. But our lives must be a perfect reflection of who you are. A perfect reflection of the Bible. Our lives must be a walking Bible, leaving a piece of red of man, because that's the only one that will read and desire to know you and desire to want to love you more and want to serve you more. Thank you, Father, because we know you always hear an answer. For in Jesus' mighty and blessed name, we pray for thanksgiving. And all the saints shall say, Jainamas, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Until tomorrow. Ciao, ciao. Look at me, guys. Bye.